Okay, so I was just mentioning it. I wanted to go over it again because I know folks do watch the recording. Um, oh, so while also while we're getting ready, you'll need a strap today. We will need to go near a wall today. So you'll need some space that is, you know, like a, a good good wall space, not a lot of it, but at least a little. Um, and then I have a towel, it's just a bath towel. What I do is I fold it in half um, like this and then roll it up. And we, we will use that also in our practice and it will feel awesome. I was also, um, I was starting to say, and I realized I should say this stuff first. We're gonna be only doing the Zoom for another two weeks after today. So we're gonna be moving back to the church on August 30th. That will be the next class. So there's two more Zoom classes. We're off the 23rd and the 30th. We'll move back into the church. So I do not believe we will be recording. Um, hybrid is insane to manage between in person and online. So that's gonna get um, that's gonna get a little bit tricky. And we'll kind of like play it by year how things go with moving into fall and continuing. I believe in person will be the expected continuation of getting back to doing yoga human to human, which is kind of neat. So I'm very excited about that. I think that's the general consensus. There's a lot of excitement. So it'll be awesome to see your faces closer. And um, I was uh, so I was chatting with a friend um, the other day and we were talking about how some of our our goals and our plans have shifted a lot. Um, specifically, we were talking about relationship stuff and it was like, we're kind of talking about, you know, man, like I thought I had done all of this really good work to figure out what I wanted and what was important to me. And then I've, I've made this shift and I've kind of maybe thought that I should be going in a different direction. And it's like, do I just throw out all that I thought that I knew before? And how much of it is still applicable? How much do I still need to take with me and consider? And, and I was trying to unpack this and, and process it. And I just went to my, my comfort zone, my safe space is to think of like, okay, how do I apply this to yoga? And I started thinking about how there are a lot of physical yoga posture cues that have changed a lot in the last like 20, 30 years. I'll often joke like, oh, it's not 1993 anymore. So we don't do the pose this way. You know, um, two specific examples being doing um, triangle pose in between two panes of glass and pinching your shoulder blades together to open your heart. So those two specific things are things that, you know, we have we have said in yoga instruction at previous points because it had a purpose and it was a good way to convey specific ideas. Pinch the shoulder blades together. Oh, it does open the heart. Stacking the hips and being in between two panes of glass and triangle pose starts to prevent people from doing this, which we don't want so much. We want this, right? But then we've got these layers on top of it. And I'll, I'll come back to this when we're doing some of those poses because I think it would be much more beneficial and you don't want to hear me talk for forever about it without us moving. So I'm um, just kind of knowing that, yes, those things had purpose when we came to that information, but as we've moved on and really getting to know bodies and, and healthy ways of moving and aligning ourselves and integrating both strength and flexibility, we've learned better. And when we know better, we do better, right? And it's not to like throw out those cues of stay open here and, you know, find this expansiveness up in the chest. It's about how do we then layer on this additional information to do a little bit better. So I guess the, the, the too long didn't read is it's continuously going to be this like the overwhelming um, flood of information as we continue to know and, and learn and grow. And it's just like, you kind of just got to like take all of it and you can throw pieces out, but like it does, it does just start to grow. Like there is no one specific thing. The, the better we know, the, the more there is, right? Um, which is mildly terrifying <laughs> or kind of empowering, depending on how you look at it. So let's get into this uh, practice in the body. We'll take the index finger and the thumb together. 
beginning at the center of the forehead with the base of your thumb, brush outwards towards your temples a few times. And then going from the sides of your nose out to your temples along the cheekbones. And from your temples down to your chin along the jawline. And the sides of your nose down to your chin along your laugh lines. And then massaging underneath and behind your ears. So we're feeling for the soft spot and then lifting up from the bony spot that's right up above the soft spot and feeling that lift continue, lengthening through the back of the neck. And then trying to keep that length as you relax your hands down into your lap and start moving the breath. Nice and long, in and out through the nose. These ideas of learning better and doing better really speak to non-attachment. I don't need to be stuck in one way of doing things just because it was the best information or the best choice previously. I don't need to be stuck in a version where I throw everything out previously when I learned something new. I can let this, um, let this exchange and this growth be malleable, nebulous. Keep picking and choosing, sorting things out. And then in the future, when I, I learn more and I decide upon a slightly different way of going about it, the process just expands. Just as long as we don't let ourselves get stuck. Next time you take a breath in, nice and full through the nose. Big exhale through your mouth. Again, like that. For three. Oh. your eyes start to take a shift onto your hands and knees and you're going to want to have your rolled up towel coming in with you so you just have it handy when you get that so you need to pat up underneath your knees of course you need that as well and we're going to come back currently the toes under you're going to press your hips back and then flip forward I would go for a slightly longer stance here. I'm just going to press back and forward. And then after a couple of times, I can walk my knees back just to scooch. And I can go back and forth, back and forth a few times. After a round or two of that, you might also walk the hands back. And then I exhale, inhale. Maybe you walk the hands back. If the hips can get back a little bit more, a nice big stretch in the bottom of the feet. One more time. And then coming out of that, we're gonna take the tops of the feet down and give a little drum roll. 
And then you're going to grab that towel and you're going to bring it right in the crease of your knees. And you kind of got to move forward a little bit in your hips. So I've got this towel in there and then I'm going to walk my hands back. And I might stay here, but I want to try to stay with a long spine and less of this crunching. If you can bring your hands onto your thighs, I'll warn you, it's sometimes you may not want to. That's all good, or you can keep the fingertips down. Take a little tiny shift, like a little, like an inch or two, just to kind of strum the hamstrings and press into the calves a little bit. Notice if you've still been breathing. See if you can give yourself a long inhale and exhale. And then you're going to take this towel and you're going to shift it back a little bit. You want to go to the bottom of your calf muscle. But not necessarily all the way down onto your Achilles, but it might be down there a little bit. And then this one is often a lot easier to rest back in, but you might still decide to keep your hands down. Either is fine. We'll be here for a super long time. Let's just say take a nice inhale and then let something soften as you exhale. Forward, come off of your rolled up towel. We'll set that to the side and then come onto your back with your strap. I won't be super speedy through everything all day. It's just that none of us really like to be on our knees and toes that much, right? So just wanted to get that in so we can get into the good stuff now. Let's go left foot on the floor and take your strap around the bottom of your right foot. We're going to go straight leg and soft leg. We're going to start with straight leg because that's going to really lengthen and strengthen this um, bottom of our, our quadricep, the muscles that go down and surround the knee and protect it. So straight leg, two hips on the ground firmly, push that foot out. You should feel that little muscle right in the bottom of your quadricep, really firing up. Take two more breaths like this. After that next exhale, let your leg relax a little bit. So you've got that kind of straight, but not, not super straight space. And then just bring that leg in as close as feels reasonable. And you can let your hip roll up in order to bring that leg in. Go ahead and let the body adjust and make space for this change. So you should feel a little bit of a stretch, but nothing, nothing too wild. Easy, pleasant stretching, not letting the ego get ahead of us stretching. Take two more breaths like this. And then you're going to keep pulling on to the leg and just think about what's happening in your hips. Probably your tailbone has curled up away from the floor, right? You've got this little tuck of your pelvis in towards you. So instead of letting your tailbone be curled up, you're going to start letting your tailbone uncurl back down towards the floor. And maybe the leg goes a little bit further away from you as you do that. That's fine. One more exhale. And then we're going to release this leg. Go ahead and set that foot down. And you're going to take the strap around the bottom of your left foot. Wrap it up around your knuckles. Make that leg really, really straight. The degree of straight that is actually kind of hard to hold because it involves some firing up of that muscle at the bottom of the quad. So once you've got that leg nice and straight and you relax your jaw muscles and your collarbones and then get into your breath, keep pushing the foot into the strap. Two more long deep breaths. And you'll start bending the leg just a little bit. So just so it's not super straight, you're not trying so hard to hold that leg out there. That's going to give you a little bit more space where you can bring the strap of the leg a little bit closer towards your body and just go to the point where you feel like you've done a little bit of good work and it's not too intense. And as you breathe into it, as you 
feel the space start to open up. You soften with your exhales. One more breath like this. And then you're gonna start letting your tailbone uncurl downwards towards the floor again. So the leg might go a little bit further away from you. Maybe the leg stays in and you just start to feel that hip and the tailbone tilting down, the pelvis tilting away from you instead of towards you. One more breath out. And then releasing the strap from your foot, go ahead and set both feet down. You're gonna take the strap and set it aside. And then you're gonna wiggle your feet a little bit wider. Take your arms out and back behind you. Just sprawl them out because your chest opening. Kind of flex the feet, drawing the toes up towards your shins. Let your knees go over towards the right side. The left knee doesn't come down. Just reach that left knee away from you. We're stretching out the front of that quad a bit. One more breath out. And then knees coming back up and over towards the left side. Keep those toes flexed up towards your shins. One more breath out. And then coming back to the center. You've got this rolled up towel somewhere near you. Go ahead and roll over, grab it, and you're gonna set it up so that it's gonna go lengthwise right down about where your spine is. And you wanna lay down so that your, your rib cage goes as much in the center of this as possible. So it shouldn't be so high that it's hard to get your head down on the ground. If it is, you just grab your pillow and stack it underneath your head. There should be a, not a huge roll, but enough that I can get it underneath my whole rib cage and my head drops back. I'm just gonna take my arms and let them soften out to my sides here. If you're feeling really tight in your chest and you want a lot, you're gonna make cactus arms. If that feels not good, if that's too much, you need a little bit softer release, you're gonna leave hands down by your sides. Try to leave the palms facing up in either case though, because it's another good little cue for the chest to open, the body to become expansive. I've got knees bent. It's a good way to protect the lower back. I'm gonna spend just another couple of breaths just giving in here, surrendering, softening. Letting the chest space open up a little bit more. Three more breaths. And when you're feeling about done with that, you're gonna take one hand, cross it over, roll off of your towel. I'm gonna to take the towel and move it off to the side. We should be pretty much done with that for today. And then you're gonna roll all the way over onto your belly. Bring your hands in underneath your forehead, settle on down. Maybe wiggle your pelvis a bit side to side. And then we're gonna start examining that shoulder blades squeezing together kind of idea. Like where do, we, where do we get that from and what do we do that might be a little bit better? And I've gone over most of this before. It might not be super brand new, but it might just be like an interesting way to re-examine. So we're gonna take the hands in by your shoulders 
And you can have your forehead down on the ground if that feels okay, but I can't talk to you if I do that. So I'm, I've got my head lifted. I want you to take your shoulder blades and do, do the thing that maybe isn't so great in the long run. Just squeeze your shoulder blades as far together as you can. And what do you notice? And the chest does open, right? You can feel your collarbones getting wider. You can feel that it's opening that heart space, but it also is a little bit squeezy and maybe hard to maintain the breath with the shoulder blades squeezed together like that. So go ahead and relax them. Yeah. Let's give yourself a whiff. All right. We're gonna go up into Cobra Pose. Do the squeeze for just a little bit. So squeeze them together, come up Cobra Pose. Okay, so we've got the squeeze going on. The chest is open. What would it feel like to try to stay lifted in the chest and then relax some of that squeeze? Maybe you think of relaxing your shoulder blades a little bit wider. Maybe you think of the corners of your shoulders getting a little bit more open. And it might even feel better there. And you might not even have, have dropped your chest down very much. Take another breath in. And then soften on down. Take your hands out wider. Wiggle your elbows side to side. So we're giving a little bit more freedom to those shoulder blades. So one of the little, little cues and stories I like to give is if I took little like, if I tattooed little lips and kisses on the outsides of your shoulders, could you take those kisses and like reach them out and, and leave a kiss mark on the walls to the sides of you? Like that's a, something to think about like, reaching out to the side and maybe that can help to get an open chest without squeezing shoulder blades together. So slide those hands back in. We're going to come up into cobra pose. Try to do it without squeezing your shoulder blades together at all. So can you feel, you know, the, your, your chest opening, hopefully not squeezing shoulder blades together. Come on up into cobra pose and then think about the corners of your shoulders reaching out to the sides or maybe your ears have to lift up a little bit more. Maybe you just feel your neck getting longer and that helps. Take another breath in and then soften on down. Make a pillow for your head with your hands again. Maybe you rock your hips a little bit side to side. Another one here is gonna be to grab the strap and you're gonna take your strap back behind your hips and you're gonna hold the strap with your palms facing up a little bit wider than your hips. And then you're gonna bend your elbows. Now, as you bend your elbows, your shoulder blades might come closer together. Try not to squeeze them. You're gonna turn the elbows to face up. The shoulder blades probably got closer together. That is anatomically necessary. We're not actively squeezing them together. Now, as we straighten the arms, you're gonna reach that strap back behind you. You can stay here and just stretch your chest like this or lift up into locust pose. Maybe the legs lift up as well. Can you feel the shoulders kissing the sidewalls? Another thing I like to do here that helps to open the chest without squeezing shoulder blades together and compressing is to reach the strap back towards my feet. One more breath in and then lower it down. Release your strap, let that go. One more time, pillow for the head with the hands, wrap your hips a little bit side to side. We're gonna go from here into downward facing dog. So bring your hands in, lift your belly, see about pushing yourself up off the floor. Make sure your fingertips are spread out wide, push strong from the back of the heart and curl the toes in a downward facing dog. Your hips lifting up, your head relaxing, elbows face towards your toes and not to the sidewalls. One more exhale. And then feet to the hands, hands to the feet. Come into a fold, bend your knees as much as you need. Let your back relax. Start walking your hands with your legs, coming up to standing. Then we got some of that wall work to do. 
Siren even needs some space where you can bring your body right up against the wall. So you will need um, maybe a little bit more uh, wall space than you might usually do. Find, find some space, not a lot. But at least let's start off with you're going to have your hand. I'm going to bring it just up like so. So it's going to be shoulder in line with my elbow and then the palm facing out. And I'm just going to bring my body to where that is right out exactly from my shoulder, my hands right there. And then I'm gonna leave the palm facing and the elbow on, and then I'm gonna take a little scooch forward, just a little bit. If you don't feel anything and you need to scooch forward a little bit more, that's fine. You should have your head right above your feet. So I'm stacked up, I'm not leaning into the wall, I'm not looking away from the wall. And I'm press my forearm and my hand into the wall. By doing that, I feel the, the side of my chest open up, yeah? But, and my shoulder blade does go back a little bit, but it's my shoulder blade jamming into my spine. Not so much. More of that reaching outwards, that expansion that's opening me up here. One more exhale. And then you're going to take the arm and you're going to reach it out, palm facing back behind you. I've got my hand roughly in line with my shoulder back there. I know that there's a huge shadow. I don't know what's going on, but there's a shadow. So that's my arm that's back there. See? I'm going to try to bring my chest forward and press that hand into the wall gently. If you feel your shoulder blade jamming into your spine, you need to scooch a little bit away from the wall, but just that tiny little bit. I press that hand in. Now, place your other hand on your heart. Lift your heart up and forward. See if you can put more weight into your toes and less weight into your heels. And then notice what's happened to your breath that probably got more intense. One more exhale. And relax that. Let that arm come down. Swing it back and forth a little bit. We'll move to the other side. So turn around and have your arm just like so, elbow to shoulder, palm faces into the wall. It's just lined up right there. Stacked up so that head and heart are right up above my feet. Okay, take a little scooch forward. Your mileage may vary, your scooch length may be a little bit different. We've all got that like hand print, paint hand print level intensity of pressing the palm into the wall. One more exhale. And then you're going to take the arm and come off the wall a little bit so I can extend that palm directly behind me. It's about in line with my shoulder. I'm going to keep turning my inside, uh, my inside side to face front instead of letting it roll behind me. And then making that gentle pressure into that back hand again. The outside hand can come to your heart so you can feel that heart lifting up and forward. Maybe the weight comes more to your toes. So we're feeling that lengthening in the spine. One more exhale. And then turn to the wall a bit. Release your arm. Go ahead and shake them back and forth a few times. And we're going to take downward dog at the wall. I will shift this way so I'm not just putting my bum towards you. You're going to take your hands about hip height, press them into the wall, shoulder width apart. We're a doorways distance, we're an almost a doorway, a narrow doorway, but enough for you. And then you'll have hands or hips above your feet, hands in line with your hips, a little bend into the knees if that's helpful. Bend your elbows a little bit, wrap them towards the floor and then push with your heart into your hands and lengthen the back of your neck. 
Now imagine somebody came and lightly grabbed your pelvis and lightly pulled towards the center of the room from that pelvis, just a little bit longer in your back. One more exhale. And looking up, walk your feet up. And you're gonna need to come to a space where you are able to get flat up against the wall. So, um, I think here I keep trying to find a better place to put it. Oh, okay, never mind. I unhooked my speaker to begin with. Okay, so I'm gonna come right up to where my toes are against the wall. Got my belly up against the wall. It's a little awkward. I'm just gonna kind of go with it here. I'm gonna take your hands up. You can have bent elbows, but bring your hands together. Make Charlie's Angels fingers. And I'll press my belly up into the wall. Now lift your heart up to your hands. Look up towards your hands. Draw your belly in towards your spine, but you're still pressing your torso against the wall. And you're gonna keep pushing into your feet. So you're gonna keep pushing the hips towards the wall, but maybe your heart starts to come back. And you're not trying to dump back into the center of the room. Lift your heart up to your hands. Maybe from there, you start to feel stronger and start to tilt back. But don't go to the point where your, your back hurts. It's not about going back. It's about lifting that heart up. Try it. One more breath. Exhale. And then come back. Release your arms. But now you're going to turn yourself around so that your back is in towards the wall. I've got my heels pretty close to the wall. I'm just going as best as my body is going to allow. Take your hands to your belly. <laughs> this gets hard. You're going to wrap your belly back towards the wall. So I'm engaging my core here. Now I'm going to take my hands out in front of me. And I'm going to try to reach my arms up to the wall while still wrapping my belly back towards the wall. And it's really hard. And then relax that. Now, instead of getting your hands just to the wall, can you also reach them up as much as possible? So wrap that belly back in and then lift your heart up to your hands, still wrapping the belly towards the spine, reach the arms a little higher. And then relax, wiggle your shoulders and your hips. And we're gonna do that, but last shape one more time. So you're gonna bring your belly back to the wall. I'm almost done with this. The next thing is a downward dog at the wall. Doesn't it, don't, don't this feel great? It's like the, the treat at the end of all of this nonsense. So I've got hips up against the wall, toes up against the wall as much as I can. Then I take my hands up and I'm gonna lift my heart up. Lifting, 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 rising, 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 and releasing. And then as promised, downward dog against the wall. Let's press the hands in, walk the feet back, elbows point down that out pressing the hips back into the center of the room big breath out looking up and walking your feet up and we'll come back up to standing okay last thing you may want to stay by a wall or come back to a wall if you find it difficult to hold your foot with your hand grab your strap we're going to do dancer's pose. It's going to be um, whatever a big balance shape. So option to take the strap around your ankle and hold on like so. I always recommend holding closer than you think you need to. If you have uh, the space to hold on to the inside edge of your foot, we'll go with that. You can always have your hand at a wall or maybe decide you don't need it. But your shoulder is going to come back towards your spine. That is just the way this is going to go. Try not to squeeze it though. We don't want to think just shoulder dropping back. We want to think heart going forward. So push your foot into your head. Can you feel that shoulder going back? It happens. That's okay. But now instead of just going that way, now I'm going to go also forward in the heart. Lifting and lengthening my chest. Trying to square my hips. Knee faces down, not out to the side. One more breath in. And then release it. Set the foot down. Wiggle things out a little bit, and we'll go for the other side. So I'm just going to stay right here. So you have the hand down, or you can take the hand off at any point. I'm going to grab the inside edge of my foot, lift up. I'm opening the front of this hip as much as possible. As I push my foot back, the shoulder is going to go back, but I'm not going to just leave it into that squeezy place. 
I'm gonna lengthen my chest forward, lift the inner thigh, lift up long in the spine, up and forward in the heart. One more breath in. And then releasing, setting the foot down. Give a little bounce around. And then we're gonna come back to the mat. Okay. How are we doing? Fabulously. All right, we got a little bit more. I talked about wanting to do triangle pose. So we're gonna do side angle and we're gonna do triangle pose and kind of examine some of that stuff from the back. Um, I think you should be able to, I'm just gonna do this. Okay, so I'm gonna face back here. You should still be able to see all of this stuff. So come into warrior two. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll go um, same side as me, so just on the left side first. So in warrior two, check out that you've got your knee over your toes. And then come down into side angle. And back, you know, I joke in the 90s, we would say, you know, you want to be in between two panes of glass. Or you want to think of the shoulder blade pulling back here. Why do we do that? Because the tendency is to come into side angle here. See, I'm, I'm shooting forward. It's easier that way. It just is. But it's not really opening anything up. It's compressing places. So in order to open us up, we said, bring the shoulder blade back, bring the arm above your ear. But now the shoulder blade is squeezing into my spine, creating pressure. How do I stay open in the chest and not have pressure? I just move the arm forward a little bit. So maybe over my nose instead of my ear, but I've still got the chest open that way, right? And now I can really push into that back foot and open up that hip, it's lovely. And then I'm gonna lift it up because I've had quite enough of that, a whole lecture and time in that space. And we'll go into triangle pose. So in triangle pose, what was that? That old cue is to be in between two panes of glass. But since I am a human being and I am not two dimensional, it's not gonna work out that way. Let's examine trying to stay in between two panes of glass and just see how it goes. So I'm gonna stay between two panes of glass. Just bring my hand down a little bit. Now, in order to, in thinking the two panes of glass, it was to try to not get us to go here, right? Because if I go here, I can go all the way down what's happening in my back it's rounding and even if i'm lifting up in my shoulder here my back is rounded i'm exaggerating a little bit but that is that is what happens the back will round to get your hand down if instead let's all come up if you take this shift in the hips so if my left leg is forward my right hip is higher and then my right hip tilts forward a little bit and then you slide the hand down the shin now I've got room to lengthen my spine. I can still open my chest by bringing my shoulder back, my whole arm bone, and lengthen ears away from tailbone. One more exhale. And then take it on up. We'll switch to the other side. I'll face you this time because I find it strange. So you might not be mirroring me now. Just go to your other leg. I have to, I have to do both. I don't want to be left-sided of myself, we'll take arms out here. So set up warrior two, okay? As is God. Let me see about coming into side angle and just see what my tendency in my body is. Like even, so I'm, I'm rolling forward a little bit in my chest there. I could do a little bit more opening in my chest and then making sure that the shoulder blade stays off the spine. And then I'm gonna really lengthen through that side wall, that side of the body. If I have my shoulder blade coming back, I am cutting off a chain of fascia. In order to get that side line of fascia, I have to let that arm come forward. One more exhale. And then come on up. Let's start in between two panes of glass, just seeing how it goes. This is my tight hamstring too. See, I'm really curved. Like in order to get down, I really have to curve my back, right? It's just not fun. So instead of doing that, I take the shift in the hips, let the top one come over slightly, and then come down. I've got this much straighter spine. More spacious in the lower back. It's a deeper, honestly, probably a better stretch, right? One more exhale. And then coming on up. Last thing is we're standing, we're gonna take all 10 toes to face forward. You're welcome to just take your hands down and enjoy a fold. If you've already had too much stuff going on in the shoulders, and you know, we did a lot of shoulder stuff today, we did a lot of heart opening. So if it feels better to bring your hands down and your wide-legged forward fold, just do that. 
and even just kind of like maybe listen to the other cues with the shoulders. So come on court. I'm going to show this. So you take the hands behind your back, you're going to bend your elbows. You can always hold on to the strap instead of holding hands. That's all good. We're going to draw the elbows back, keep the elbows bent, and then come forward into this fold. And you can stay here if you can draw your belly in, or you can drop down for it. It's up to you. So I've got my elbows bent, right? I'm going to extend my arms and my shoulder blades are going to get closer together. We're not going to be able to avoid that, but I can have a little bit of squeezing here and it might not feel super great. So if I have that, I'm going to bend my elbows again, take my elbows up and then maybe extend the arms again. And then there's this space where it's a little bit less jammed in the shoulders. And if you're not sure you found it, bend the elbows again and then extend the arms again. Just kind of taking it a few times, taking the opportunity to realign some body parts a little bit, and then let out an exhale, especially if you have it yet. And then release your hands to your hips, draw your belly in um, all the way back up. Our transition down is going to be down dog to then lay flat on the belly. So if you want to come straight to lay flat on the belly, you can do that. If you're feeling open enough for another down dog, we'll go that route. Hands down, feet down, hips up, elbows facing to the floor. Finding all the power in that expansive back space you've been building up. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Lower your knees back and down onto your belly. From here, we are going to take bow pose as our big final shape. If you want to grab your strap, what you might do is use the strap to hold on to your feet. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to bring the strap around my shins, hold on with one hand, roll myself open. So strap, always an option. You might decide as you pull those feet in closer, like, oh man, my feet aren't that far. Away from my hands anyway, I'd rather just grab them. So you get to decide. We're gonna go up twice. Your shoulder blades are going to get closer together, but rather than just jamming the shoulder blades together to create the heart opening, can you instead feel your heart reaching up and forward to open? So not bending into the back, but expanding into the heart, yeah? So roll your inner thighs up and in towards each other. Lift your belly up towards your spine. Now push the feet into your hands and strap. And then reach your heart forward like you're trying to shine a big light out. One more inhale. And lower. This second round is a little like an extra oomph that, um, that I've been doing in this pose for quite some time. I find it very helpful. You're going to take your pelvis and you're going to lift it up a little bit like you're sticking your booty up in the air. And then the action of pressing your hips down is maybe gonna help you get a little bit fuller into the shape. So try that. Push the hips down and good duck. Roll your inner thighs up and in towards your hips. One more inhale and exhale, lower. Release your legs. If you've got that strap still, we'll set it down. Make a pillow for your head with your hands. Rock your heels side to side. Then you'll roll over onto your back. Just be on the floor. I'll take one bridge pose that might be a little bit more familiar in the body, the bow pose, which is often not super popular, but can be a good one for your shoulders. So wiggle the shoulders underneath your back. Now I stay shoulders together. 
not to squeeze, but to come together as a method of support for your hips. So bring them in a little bit. As you lift your hips up, you might be able to bring them in for a little more support. Maybe the hands hold underneath your back, push into your feet. Feel your heart rising right up into your nose. One more breath in. Breathing out, relaxing your shoulders, and then softening your spine down onto the floor. Start to slide your legs out, and then reach your arms open into an X shape. The legs and arms kind of wide. Take your right ankle over onto your left ankle. Take your right hand over towards your left hand and hold onto that right hand. So you can pull it out, creating that side stretch. Roll your belly button over towards the right so your right hip gets close to the floor. Let your right shoulder blade come off of the spine to really lengthen through the outside of that armpit. One more exhale. Relax that right arm. Un Expand it into that X, relax the right leg, expand it into that X, and then we'll switch to the other side. So left ankle coming on top of right ankle, and then left arm coming over so you can hold it with the right hand, releasing the shoulder blade, rolling the belly button over towards the left. One more exhale. And then release your arm and your leg and come back down to lay flat on your back. Just take a big breath in and a big breath out. Slide your heels in by your hips. I'll take the right ankle up onto the left knee, stay here pressing the thigh bones forward or take the right arm in between the legs and hold on to the left leg. Much like when you have that, that strap holding onto your leg, can you uncurl your tailbone down towards the floor? And never, is, it's really just not gonna touch, that's fine, that's not the goal. The goal is the uncurling, it's the action. One more exhale. Set your left foot down, your right foot down, and cross the opposite ankle on top. We'll go either pressing the thighs forward or left arm in between, holding onto your right leg. Two more breaths. Releasing your right foot and your left foot down. Just let your knees knock against each other for a moment. I'm going to take the knees over towards the right side. You might just roll them over to the right, or you can bring the knees in before rolling them over, which is going to be a tighter twist. And you get to decide what seems a little better of a choice for you. I would recommend pushing into the back of the right arm a little bit to see if you can open that left shoulder more. Let yourself soften down into the floor, surrendering into this twist and softening with your exhales.
Two more breaths. And then moving the shape over to the other side, finding a similar feeling twist, maybe pushing into the back of the left arm to open the right arm a little more, the right shoulder. Every exhale, let your belly get softer. One more breath out. And then coming back to the center, again, knees knock towards each other. And if there's any specific way that you would like to rest, you would like to set your body up for Shavasana, absolutely take that opportunity. You've got lots of tools around you. You might just start to decide to slide out feet long small snuggle of shoulder blades underneath the heart and then let yourself submit into this beautiful rest and joy.
attention in the back to your breath. Breathe a bit more deeply and making some small movements and starting to wake yourself back up. It might feel nice to switch your arms overhead. Then, when you're ready, curl over onto your favorite side, draw inwards with this moment of gratitude for our practice, being able to gather here in this way together. When you are ready, finding your own version of a comfortable seat. Hands at your heart, heart lifted and open. Feeling practice, releasing one arm together. Take breath in. down to the love and light that resides within each of our hearts. Namaste. Beautiful days. I will see you soon. See you next week. I will send out an email with more details about things too. So.